people, welcome back to the YouTube channel. You already know what time it is. It's lateness, it's greatness. I'm making this in the dark. I'm bringing you this video in the light. That's right, you're seeing it in the light. And uh, listen, for me, I missed the game, man. I missed the game, Club America. I had to watch it back on playback because 3 a.m. was a rough one for me. I was under the influence with the app producer Waterloo on a Saturday night and the next thing you know, ordered the KFC and set the alarm and neither saw me ever again because I just did not rise. I was dead, do you know what I mean? I wanted to do the watch along, I wanted to do the review, but it happened and mistakes happened. Bad day at the office, but I'm telling you, I'll be back for Charlotte, I'll be back for Arsenal and Udinese. Those times are a little bit easier for the UK man then, but big up to all the internationals who do this week in, week out and watch the games at stupid times because let me tell you something, I was struggling, struggling. Do you know what I mean? It was not easy. It ain't easy in these streets. But let's get into this video. Alternatives in the attack. I know Kimpembe, Kunde, that's the war for this week. We're going to be looking at defenders to sort out the defence as soon as possible. Attack comes next. But I want to talk about attackers because we saw, I saw in the playback against Club America, we're losing and missing that bite. We're, we're missing that little bit of spice. We're, we need just a little extra piece invested into the upfront areas because even though Sterling is not there, you can see, yes, we're trying. Kennedy pulled off some shots. Werner got a, a, a second stab at it. Decent performance from Gallagher. Ampadu looking good as well in the centre of the defence. We need more in the attack. We need something clinical, something cutthroat, something precise. And therefore, the targets have to come, don't they? So we're going to try and predict, I guess, look at some alternatives that we could potentially approach in this market um, later on in the window when we want to go back and focus on the attack. Now, I'm going to go with these names. I'm going to start with my favourite. I know it's unrealistic and I know... We ain't going to probably get him, but I have to say he could be available, so I have to throw his name out there. Contract expiring in 2025. My favourite player when he was at Man City, even though I was a Chelsea fan, he was my favourite player outside of Chelsea in the Premier League, Leroy Sané. This guy, oh my goodness, he's incredible. What a player, what an unbelievable footballer, in my opinion, can play on both flanks. I know he's predominantly left-footed, but he's one of them one-footed players that are actually worth being one-footed like if you're going to be one-footed make sure that foot is damn good and that's what it is with Leroy Sané not only does he give you the threat from the free kicks but he's just brilliant at going past players he's a wonderful player in terms of close control a, a playmaker brilliant at spraying the ball in terms of long passing range very deft touches in final third areas to give you that assist but can also score goals as well I think with that that Sterling relationship you look at where he could play he could play on the right He's played on the right for Bayern Munich. He's he's played on the left. He's played on the left for Bayern Munich. This season, more predominantly on the left. Last season, more predominantly on the right. For Manchester City, we saw him on the left. He's capable of creating chances with those cutbacks, scoring those goals with his left foot. But like I said, cutting inside on the right-hand side as well. So him and Sterling already know each other. The chemistry would already be there. And no real serious injuries in the last year. Or, you know, in the last year was a good year for Sani in terms of involvement. Not playing every single game, but getting over that massive injury that he had um, at Manchester City when he made that move um, in his last little stint there. For me, the most exciting player on this list, like I said, such a complete footballer. And for me personally, would take us to another level. You know, you're talking about now having elite. This is an elite level signing. This is a signing that is linked with Real Madrid. And it's looking like they're looking for about 80 million. I can understand that. I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm not expecting us to go for a player like this. But in terms of just the, the full package, everything that you need from an attacker, oh, <laughs> the guy is unbelievable. The, the guy is honestly unbelievable. So, like I said, he's one of my favourite forward players. Much like the Gnabry is probably falling on deaf ears, but... If we try to approach like, like they did with Gnabry, I ain't got no problem with that. I ain't stressing, do you know what I mean? But this is one of my favourites for sure. I know seven goals, seven assists doesn't look great for a 26-year-old in his last season in the Bundesliga. But come on, you saw him at Manchester City. Let's not play games, do you know what I'm saying? And when you look at the minutes played as well at Bayern Munich, you can understand maybe where the statistics are coming from. Now, I want to also talk about this next player because... You've mentioned him in the comments once or twice. I've decided to look into it. 
is Victor Oshimi. Now at Napoli, 14 goals to assist. He did have a fractured cheekbone injury this season that prevented him from playing more. I don't think we're going to go for a number nine, but if we do, this is probably one of the number nines in the world that you can go for. And he actually still is able to link up with the rest of your attack. He's not taking away from your attack. I wouldn't say that he's going to create, you know, he's not here to create, he's here to put the ball in the back of the net, but he is able to link up play. He is very technically secure. He's a very good player in terms of his movement. And what I do like about Victor Oshimin as well, we'll get into the downside with the price in a minute. The guy scores headers. I mean, we have not had anybody seriously scoring headers at Chelsea, it feels like, since Didier Drogba. Lukaku was big, didn't really score that many headers. Costa did get a few. Tammy was very poor in the air. We need goals in the air. You know, Reese James is an incredible cross off the ball. This guy can head the ball very, very well. I, like I said, I don't think we're going to get a number nine because the number nine market is not great. This is probably one of the few players out on the market. Well, not even on the market, so to speak, because I'm sure he's not for sale. But... He's one of them players that are not at one of the biggest clubs where you could potentially go in and get and he'd be a brilliant sign. And depending obviously on the price, you'd have to pay a lot, I'm sure, because they are asking for around about 80 million pounds. They paid about 64 million pounds. Um, so yeah, you, you, you are gonna have to pay a pretty penny, 67 and a half million pounds. In fact, they paid 85 million pounds is what they want. You're gonna pay a lot for this guy, but 23 games, 14 goals. <sighs> he's a very, very good player. He's a very good player. He's very underrated as well. And I feel like with this player, you're getting the close control. Like I said, you're getting the movement. You're getting the headed goals. And you're just not getting someone who just completely negates the rest of your attack. I feel like he is the he's the player that can come in and you don't have to cater to his needs too much. He can obviously, you know, get involved with the rest of the play pull out wide etc and he likes to take up good positions so I like the player a lot um, although I don't think it's realistic either um, now let's get into Diaby Diaby's another one you guys have mentioned Diaby 13 goals 12 assists predominantly left footed but what I do like about Diaby is he's not afraid to use his right foot he will use his right foot he will cross with his right foot he's played on the left he's played on the right comfortable on both flanks for Bayer Leverkusen but he has scored a couple goals of his right he will definitely use his right if he sees it as an option that he needs to take he's not afraid to do it he's not going to frustrate you by always cutting in his left even when it makes sense to shoot or pass with his right the decision making seems to be really strong as well which is great to see you know 23 years old you have to question sometimes if decision making is really there. Are they mature enough to play that pass to not always go for goal? But you can see there with 15 big chances created in the Bundesliga that in fact he will create those chances. He will pay, play that pass and um, he's not just going to score goals. He's going to come in and create as well now. Bundesliga tax with this one, maybe. I know you'll definitely be thinking that. Not really with Sané because we've seen him in the Premier League. A lot of his goals and assists, you can see there's space for sure. There's transitions taking place. We know how the Bundesliga is. They have high lines. So I get that's a concern for sure. But much like in Cuckoo, just from looking at him, he looks more technically secure. He looks like a player who just is more confident with the ball at his feet in terms of going past players, in terms of dribbling, etc. Um, unlike a Timo Werner, for instance, which I know the PTSD is rolling in unpredictability is, is this guy you know the fact that he can go both ways that's that's what you're getting with him contract again until 2025 there were times when Newcastle was looking at him as well in terms of reports 60 million ish again do I expect it no just throwing out names that potentially yeah, you know potentially potentially I, I don't really know who we're gonna go for so I'm just throwing out these names and thinking now We'll see what happens because I'm not really sure at this point who we're going to go for. I'm not, I've, not, I, I've not got my, um, I'm not, not going to hypnotise you guys and say, oh, this is what's going to happen next. Like the Rafinha, we're going to go in. Gnabry, we're going to be interested. I actually have no idea now what we're going to do next. The last guy that I've got on my list is a little bit more of a wild card. He's not got the statistics, I guess, to blow you away. Or oh, it's not at least staring at you right in the face. Is Elysier. At Crystal Palace, but he's created about eight big chances this season. So that's just one behind Reese James and Ziyech. Two players that haven't started consistently this season, of course, in terms of game time because of injuries. But same with Alicia, you know, only 14 starts. So he's not exactly been starting all the games as well. I think with him, sorry, just 12 starts for Alicia. Um, 
I think with Alicia for me, the, 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 what it comes down to is the player is just so good on the ball. So good on the ball in terms of progressive passing, dribbling, going past players, faking it with the left, going to the right. Just a very good chance creator. The creativity is there. Now, there's no goals because there's only two goals this season. You could say he definitely needs to get more goals. We need goals in the front line. So that's a weakness. That's an area where you're going to say it feels like a hudson Doy situation. We can't afford to have that. Again, this is an outsider kind of player where maybe in a year's time, kind of pushes more for a big move or, or blows up in terms of his metrics on the Premier League. But then you're going to have to pay the price and there's going to be more clubs interested. So this is kind of an ahead of the curve type player. Maybe if you were to get him this summer, you are taking a gamble because you need goals. But the guy's creativity is very clearly going to be there. If you're looking for creativity and you want more chances created, this guy for me is creating chances. There's, there's no doubt about it because... He's just, he's just so intelligent and he puts things on a plate for people, whether it's going down with that left foot, of course, his stronger foot, crossing the ball, very good crosser, um, very intelligent, spotting runs, or like I said, faking it and going on his right and drilling it across, just a very good chance creator. But he does hug the touchline quite a bit, that's where he starts from, similar to Rafinha and Ziyech, we don't really play our wingers, so unless Tuchel's going to change the formation, you can have some question marks there as well, because when you look at his heat map, he very much wants to predominantly be on that touchline. Um, outsiders that I haven't gone through extensively because Rafael Liao, we spoke about uh, a couple of days ago with obviously uh, Marco from IFTV. So there's no point talking about him again, but that's obviously Chelsea's rumoured top target in this position, the player that they're looking at the most. Um, and then you have Anthony from Ajax as well. I've seen Anthony a few times this season in Europe personally don't think he's quite ready yet um, for this move for a big move but again this could be another ahead of the curve kind of player that you get before they absolutely smash it up in terms of metrics and more clubs become interested i do see this type of player going to a la liga just feels like that brazilian you know spanish club but again we'll see um so that's my list I don't know who's going to join in the attack. I don't think the club even knows. I think right now the club are focusing on the defence. They're not sure who's going to be in the attack. And they're kind of just waiting to see what opportunities come up that fit what we're trying to do, which is the key. I think all of these players, in a way, fit. They will press, you know, Oshimin, 23 years old. You can get him to press DRB. Again, metrics-wise, doesn't seem to be pressing a lot, but you can get him to press, I think, a 23. He's got the legs. Sané. Decent presser, was at Manchester City, knows what it takes to do that. Alicia, very good presser, only 20 years old. So I think from an off-the-ball standpoint, you're not losing a lot. Technically, I think all these guys are technically quite secure, more than some more than others. Um, and the prices obviously range. Sane and, and, and um, Oshimin are going to be very expensive. DRB, Alicia, still expensive. Liao, Anthony expensive everybody's expensive so there is no range i lied <laughs> but let me know what you think in the comments down below smash up the icons and i'm very interested to hear what your thoughts are in a bit people big up yourselves peace